Today I'm going to give you a brief overview of the development of the consensus statement that has been published in DMCN. Over the last 40 years, there have been improvements in medical care for children with cerebral palsy, but despite this, the death rate has not improved. And recent data shows that um, the leading cause of death in people of all ages um, with CP is respiratory illness. If you look at changes in mortality and morbidity in other chronic diseases of childhood, the healthcare outcomes have improved. So for example, cystic fibrosis. This is likely due to the development of guidelines for the management of um, cystic fibrosis, which reduces the mortality and morbidity of this condition. Now I'm not saying that um, respiratory illness in cystic fibrosis is the same as that in cerebral palsy. What is different, what is different um, is that no such guidelines are available for children with cerebral palsy and respiratory illness. Ability to have some guidelines may improve outcomes for children with CP and respiratory disease. Therefore, in 2018, we set about developing the best, uh, best practice clinical care guidelines um, to prevent and treat respiratory illness in children with CP. This process involved both using the best available evidence and was informed by consumer input. So we set out to write guidelines, but you'll see in a minute that because uh, published data was scanned, it, we ended up coming uh, up with a consensus statement. So the first step um, in this process involved identifying the best available published evidence. We published a systematic review in 2019, which found there was research in this area is inadequate with scant numbers, both scant numbers of high and, and poor quality research publications, but also a lack of research into complex care interventions. Most published research was on a single um, type of intervention. We therefore utilised um, this expert consensus via this Delphi technique and consumer involvement to supplement published evidence um, to develop the consensus statement. So this is, so basically the consensus statement is based on these three sources of information. So we ended up sending out over 200 um, invitations to potential expert participants and 117 responded. And here you can see the range of um, professions and the, and the geographical representations from uh, where respondents came from. More details about the numbers in, and specifics to this are available in the supplementary material. We found expert respondents independently generated recommendations that address all the risk factors for respiratory illness from our previous work, um, plus the inclusion of dental hygiene. These were grouped into, the recommendations were grouped into prevention, assessment and treatment. And this risk factor infographic here on the um, right, the blue one, is also available in the supplementary material with a bit more detail. The consensus document was produced um, and that combined all the data from the three sources of information. Um, all recommendations are clearly identified as consensus based due to the lack of um, high quality published data. And then what we did is we translated this document into a plain language version and sent it out for consumer review. Again, more detail is available in the supplementary material uh, regarding the qualitative review. And there was high acceptability um, of the document and all consumers unanimously conveyed the importance of the work saying it was very necessary. And I'll just main like the, highlight the main content themes here. Um, so anything in the yellow ellipses represents uh, the recommendations that were influenced by the consumer review. So part one, risk recognition and the prevention of respiratory illness. Consumers felt that um, informing parents um, early of risk was important and that ongoing surveillance for respiratory risk was also important. Part two contained recommendations of assessments and diagnostic tests and treatment of respiratory illness in CP combined the recommendations um, from the Delphi with the outcomes of the systematic review. And because the number and quality of the evidence from the systematic re review was low, all treatment recommendations are still consensus based. And consumers' um, uh, recommendations regarding clinic, uh, spare your pardon, um, knowledge translation was very clear that this need to reach all people involved in the care of children with CP 
that it need to be to be multidisciplinary and every and for people not to work in silos. And they wanted the balance of including enough detail for consumers to make an informed decision. They, the plain language summary you'll see in the supplementary material is quite long, but consumers all liked having that and having the link detail and the references, but agreed that a range of information options should be made available, including simpler formats. The consensus statement is published in DMCN, which is why you are here. We also have online workshops available. And if you are interested in those, please make contact with me via email. We have a feasibility study underway. That's our next step, really. We have registered the protocol and you can access it by the QR code on your screen. We've just finished um, completing quick reference infographics for clinicians. These are in three parts and are on your screen here. So, and they mirror the three parts of the document. And here you see the multidisciplinary involvement. Finally, I'd just like to um, acknowledge additional clinical expertise and funding we've received and really acknowledge the consumer and clinician participants and the worldwide input into the development of this document.